Hello everyone. In previous session, we just states the law of conservation of momentum. In this session, now we are going to prove the law of conservation of momentum. This is the final question that is very important question. State and prove law of conservation of momentum. Okay. So this states that that means law of conservation of momentum states that the total momentum of an isolated system of interacting particle is conserved or remains constant. Now we prove that law. Okay. For that, let us consider two objects. Let us consider two particles or two bodies like that. Let us consider two bodies. Let us call the first body as B and the second body as D. The first body is moving with some velocity. I don't know that the velocity exactly. So I should write U1. So U1 is the initial velocity of A. Okay. Next. The object B is moving with some uh, initial velocity. Again, I shall write this as U2. So, U1 is the initial velocity of A. U2 is the initial velocity of B. Okay. This is the condition before collision. This is the condition for before collision. Okay. Here, U1 is greater than U2. U1 is greater than U2. Therefore, after some time, this object A collides with the object B. After collision, the velocity of the object gets changed. After collision, the velocity collision means decay. After collision, the velocity gets tail changed. So, velocity of U1, so velocity of A becomes V1. Velocity of B becomes V2. Okay. So, after collision, the object A moves with certain change in velocity. I don't know exactly the velocity. Thus, I shall write V1. So, V1 is the velocity of the object A after collision. Okay. Next, velocity of B after collision is written as V2. Okay. Here, U1 is the initial velocity of A. U2 is the initial velocity of B. V1 is the final velocity of A and V2 is the final velocity of B. This is after collision. After collision. Okay. Now, we shall here we shall prove the law of conservation of momentum. That means momentum of total momentum before collision. We want to prove the total momentum before collision is equal to total momentum after collision. So, the object has mass M1, this object uh, B has mass M2. So, the total uh, initial momentum of A can be written as M1 U1. Initial momentum of B can be written as M2 U2 because momentum is a product of mass and velocity. Final momentum of A can be written as M1 V1. Final velocity of B can be written as M1 V2. Simply we shall write PA here. We shall write vector form because P momentum is the vector quantity. So PA vector, what is PA vector? Momentum. Momentum of A. Initial momentum of A. What is PA? PA is the initial momentum of A. Initial momentum of A. Then what is PB? So PB is the Initial momentum of B. Initial momentum of B. Okay. Then after collision, the velocity gets changed. As velocity gets changed, momentum also changes. That momentum we can written as PA dash. Then what is PA dash? PA dash is the final momentum of A. What is PA dash? Final momentum of A. Okay. Next B. That is PB dash. PB dash is the final momentum of B. Okay. So from the figure PA dash is the initial momentum of A. PB sorry. PA is the initial momentum of A. PB is the initial momentum of B. 
PA dash is the final momentum of A and PB dash is the final momentum of B. We are going, we are, we are, we are going to prove the conservation law, that is law of conservation of momentum. That means total momentum before collision is equal to total momentum after collision. Uh, the total momentum before collision is, sorry, total uh, before, uh, momentum before collision is PA and PB. That is total momentum before collision is PA plus PB. So, the final momentum is PA dash and PB dash. So, total final momentum after collision is PA dash plus PB dash. That means we are, we are here, we are going to prove PA plus PB is equal to PA dash plus PB dash. Okay. Here, we write impulse. Now, we have to write impulse. That is impulse experienced by A. Experienced by A on D is given by impulse experienced by A is given by in previous videos we know that what is impulse impulse is the product of force and time what is impulse impulse is the product of force and time which is equal to changing momentum what is impulse impulse is the product of we shall write here impulse is the product of impulse is the product of force and time or that will be equal to change in momentum. Change in momentum means initial momentum final momentum minus initial momentum. We shall write F into T or F into D force into time because time is very small because you are acting, you know, the force acting is impulsive force that force is acting for, for a short interval of time. So we shall write F T or F into D T. So, impulse is what is impulse? Force into time. That will be equal to change in momentum. Change in momentum is final momentum. Final momentum minus initial momentum. Initial momentum. Okay. So, impulse is equal to final momentum minus initial momentum. Here, first we write impulse for A. Okay, impulse experienced by A. So, impulse experienced by A can be written as F. Impulse is equal to F into D. Here we write F A B instead of F. If we write vector form because force is a vector. Okay. So, we write F A B instead of F because here there are two forces acting. During collision we know that. Uh, according to Newton's third law of motion, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Here, uh, the two objects A and B are collided with each other. The recollection, the force exerted by A on B is equal to force exerted by B on A. So, force exerted by A, B on A can be written as FAB. Force exerted by B on A can be written as FBA. So, okay. So, impulse is the force into time. For A, force experience is FAB. So, here I write FAB into DT. In Newton's third law, I say that the time, the action and reaction are acting at different bodies, but they are acting in the same interval of time. Time remains the same. Time does not change. Okay. So, FAB into DT is equal to what? Final momentum minus initial momentum. Uh, so, final momentum of you here, we will write impulse experienced by A. That means final momentum of A minus initial momentum of A. What is the final momentum of A? That is PA dash is the final momentum of A. What is initial momentum of A? PA is the initial momentum of A. So, we should write PA dash minus PA. Impulse experienced by A product of force and time that is equal to final momentum minus initial momentum. That is FAB into DT is equal to PA dash minus PA. Then FAB is equal to PA dash minus PA. If that uh, DT goes, uh, comes here that is divided by DT. FAB is equal to PA dash minus T that divided by T. This is the force experienced on A by B. We call this as equation number 1. Okay. Similarly, we should write impulse experienced by B. Okay. Impulse experienced 
by by b object b is given by again what is impulse impulse is product of force and time which is equal to change in momentum that is final momentum minus initial momentum so product of force and time is f here we should write f b a instead of f a because here the force exerted on a but here the force exerted on b so we should write f b a instead of f a b into time time remains same so into d b is equal to force into time is equal to what final momentum minus initial momentum of object b and what is the final momentum of object b P B dash is the final momentum of P. Then what is the initial momentum of object B? P B is the initial momentum of object B. Then write P B dash minus P B. Okay. This is the impulse. F B A force into time is nothing but impulse. But we want to write the expression for lift force experienced on P. So we shall write F B A. Yeah, B is equal to P B dash minus P B that divided by D B. Okay, we call this as equation number two. According to Newton's third law, we know that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, here there are two objects A and B are collide with each other. Then the force exerted by A. Uh, if B on A is given by F B, force exerted by A on B is given by F B. The equal value is opposite in Newton, opposite in direction. So F B is equal to minus F B. Yes. According to Newton's third law of motion. The two forces are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. That is, F A B is equal to minus F B A. F A B is equal to minus F B A. So, now substitute the value of F A B and F B A. What is F A B? From the equation one, F A B is P A dash minus P A is uh, divided by D T is equal to minus F T A minus O. What is F B A from the equation two? F B A is equal to P B dash minus P B that divided by D T. Okay, then D T D T get cancelled. Remaining is P A dash Minus P A, P A dash minus P A is equal to minus of P B dash minus P B. Okay, so P A dash minus P A is equal to minus into plus minus P B dash minus into minus plus P B. Okay. Now we will rearrange this equation. Okay. Initial momentum is on one side and final momentum on the other side. Okay. So here P A dash. This minus P B dash comes to left side. That becomes plus P B dash. Okay. This minus P A goes to right side. That becomes plus P. Plus the P B. That is plus P B. P A dash plus P B dash is equal to P A plus P B. What is P A dash plus P B? What is P A dash? Final momentum of A. What is P B dash? Final momentum of B. So P A dash plus P B dash means total final momentum. What is P A dash plus P B dash? Total final momentum. Okay. Is equal to What is P A? Initial momentum of A. What is P B? Initial momentum of B. What is P A plus P B? Total initial momentum. Total initial momentum. So, from 
from this it is clear that the total initial momentum before collision is equal to total final momentum after collision so this proves the law of conservation of momentum this is very important from the point of view of examination okay once again i will recall this okay let us consider what is the statement of law of conservation of momentum so law of conservation of momentum states that the total momentum of an isolated system of interacting particle is conserved or remains constant to prove that let us consider two objects object a and object b the first object a is moving with initial velocity u1 and uh, uh, second object b moving with initial velocity u2 the second object moves with initial velocity v1 sorry after collision this uh, first object moves with the final velocity v1 and the second object moves with the final velocity v2 that means u1 and u2 are the initial velocity of a and b v1 and v2 are the final velocity of a and b okay next what is pa initial momentum of a pa uh, pb initial momentum of b pa dash is final momentum of a and pb dash is final momentum of b okay so impulse experienced by a that is impulse is nothing but product of force and time impulse experienced by a is given by f pb into d is equal to change in momentum that is final momentum minus initial momentum pa dash minus b But here we want to write the expression for the force. So here P B is equal to P A dash minus P A that divided by P. Call this as equation one. Okay. Similarly, impulse experienced by E B is given by again force into time. That is F B A into D T is equal to change in momentum. That is P B dash minus P B. Again, you are here we want to write the expression for force only. So F B A is equal to P B dash minus P B. That divided by d t. Call this as equation two. According to Newton's third law, force uh, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. That means the two forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Here, Newton's third indicates that the two forces are acting in the opposite direction. Okay. So from equation one and two, so that P A dash minus P A by d t is equal to minus of P B dash minus P B by d t. So d t d t get cancelled. Remaining is P A dash minus P A is equal to minus of P B dash minus P B. That will be equal to plus into minus minus P B dash minus into minus plus P B. Now we are rearranging this terms. So we get P A dash plus P B dash is equal to P A plus P B, or P A plus P B is equal to P A dash plus P B dash. So this proves the law of conservation of momentum. That is, total momentum before collision is equal to total momentum after collision. Okay.